Here we have major muscles of the body. Here we have major organs of the body. I've uh, studied this quite a bit. When I found out how many muscles were in your face, it was unbelievable. And when you smile, you work them out. I read an entire business book on smiling and how it can affect your quality of life and your business and your leadership team. So these are all the major muscles in your body. Here are all the major organs in your body. Somebody tell me which is the most powerful. Heart? What else? Brain. 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 Half to say heart, half to say brain. Okay. To me, if the Dean of Self-Development calls your brain the most miraculous, marvelous, inconceivably powerful force the world has ever known, I'm going to learn how to use it. I'm going to learn how to direct it. I'm going to learn how to manipulate it. Okay? That's what my mentors taught me. So can we all agree that the most powerful part in your body is your brain? Is that an agreement? Can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah. We know this from the placebo effect. It's a sugar pill. A freaking sugar pill. Somebody gets a sugar pill, somebody gets the real medicine. Both get healed. The person who got the sugar pill didn't have the real medicine, but his body healed itself. How? The brain will take care of it because he thinks he's getting the medicine. We've all heard of that before. Hypochondriacs, people that make themselves sick over and over and over and over again by they stress themselves out, okay? Fear. When people are fearful, it is a code word for stress. We know stress, it's visceral. When stress starts to cut us down, it will break you down biochemically and it will break you down from the inside out. That's why it's so dangerous because we don't see it. We get stressful, we don't see it, but we can sure as hell feel it and then we don't want anybody else to know, so we feel it anymore. And we, we know how that, imagine taking your arm and just having it clenched for 24 hours. How would your arm feel after that? That is what you do when you continually stress. Stress, stress, stress. We know how that feels, so we better learn how to control it. Elderly couples. We've all heard of the elderly couples, right? They're 90 years old and they've lived with great health. One of them passes away. A week later, the other one passes away. During that week, that other person's thinking about fear and death and loneliness and want and hurt and all these things, and they break themselves down biochemically. We've all heard of these stories. We know this, and this is nothing new to us. So when I learned all this, I was like, man, that's scary. But there's one great antidote, and it's an all-natural antidote. You don't have to jump for it. You don't have to shoot for it. You don't have to drink for it. You don't have to take anything. You don't have to swallow anything for it. There's one all-natural antidote to all that bullshit, okay? Attitude of gratitude. So I'm going to share some things with you that I go over every morning. This morning, 4.30 a.m., I pull out my gratitude poem, okay? And I split it up into two things. Um, and this is a great way to change your state. I can change my state. I'm going to share with you guys five or six ways to change your state immediately. One of them, and the most powerful for me, is gratitude. And the one all-natural antidote to all that stuff that we just talked about is gratitude, okay? It is the most powerful force your mind will ever know. And when I learned that, because of what my mentors taught me, I wrote my own gratitude poem. There's one all-natural antidote, and that is without question, and it sounds very simple, in which it is, but so few people use it, is gratitude, okay? So I'm going to share some best practices with you. Every morning when I get up, I have a whole process. Now, I am not starting, I'm not asking you to start with my process, I'm just going to share with what I do. So what I do is I read a gratitude poem, okay? I read this every single morning, and I haven't missed from January 6th of 2016. I have not missed, I will not miss. That was one of our giveaways today. It's the one thing everybody asks me about when I'm done speaking. On one side, I have the things that people bitch about. On the other side, I have things that are very easy to be grateful for, okay? One of the things I hated, and I hated, and I hated is imagine getting on a plane and it's a red eye and you're exhausted and you worked all day and you're going across country and you're on this red eye plane, you got one of those neck pillows and you kind of sit back and they put the lights down and you're about to crash out and then a screaming baby just goes off. I hated that. And it's gonna sound terrible, I was like, somebody punched that baby in the face. <laughs> I hated that shit. Like, I really hated it. Like, it, 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 it stressed me out. And then when I learned about this, I was like, the baby's not stressing me out. I'm stressing me out. So I switched it, and I learned a lot about neuroassociative conditioning and how to train my brain and how to condition it. So I started doing it. So now, every time, every morning, I would say, I am grateful for the screaming baby on the plane because it means I can hear. All these senses that we take for granted, our hearing, we can walk, our heart is beating, I can feel, I can touch, I can see, I have vision. All these things that so many people don't have that I have every single fucking day and I don't sell gratitude for that? Shame on me is what I thought. So now I say, screaming baby, gratitude. Screaming baby, gratitude. Screaming baby, gratitude. Screaming baby, gratitude. And I appreciate 
people sharing their visions because now in the last two weeks, I've had people that have gotten on a plane, three people that texted me, and they said there was a screaming baby on the plane and everybody was pissed off except for me. So I appreciate people sharing their vision, okay? But for me, now every time I hear a screaming baby because I've trained and conditioned my mind, I am grateful for my hearing because a lot of people out there that can't hear and there's a lot of people out there that wish they could feel that screaming baby, okay? On this side, it's very easy stuff. I'm grateful for my mom, my dad, and my sister because they showed me a great way to live and a great way to love. I started with one or two things. I read this every morning, every single morning. Now, when I go out in the world, I have a completely different filter on my life. And I'm starting to say this a lot. Put the filters on your life first. You can put the filter on your photos later. Filter your life First. My, my dad would be on the extreme baby side, uh, <laughs> not the stuff we're all grateful for, but um, so he called me and he wanted to talk about uh, his final his final affairs, interesting conversation, so he wanted to tell me about what he wanted when he died, which wasn't really like the most positive experience, but um, I didn't really want to talk about it, it was uncomfortable in that moment, I had my son in the back seat of the car. I ended the conversation somewhat abruptly and I started to feel bad and like Ricky does, sort of snapped and, and reconditioned myself and I turned back, I was sitting at a stoplight, turned back at my son, I felt a tremendous amount of gratitude, I told him how much I loved him, I told him like, I'm so proud of you and so happy to be your dad and uh, it made me in that moment really grateful for what I don't want. I don't want that relationship that I have with my dad, with my son and it went away, that whole feeling went away. And I think, give him a round of applause, that's kick-ass to me. And I love that because a lot of people would be like, why is my dad, I don't have a great relationship with my dad, this is brutal, my son's in the car, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, but he switched it and he redefined the meaning of what happened. And because of that, he was able to have an unbelievable situation with his son. Now his son has an attitude of gratitude and has a sense of love, like how cool is that? Took a shitty situation and turned it into an unbelievable bonding situation with the son. If that's not the most powerful thing that you can do, now imagine doing that with everything. Everything that comes our way, we can switch, and we can switch it simply, just with attitude of gratitude, okay? So condition yourself with that. That is one of the most simple things that you can do that can change your life tonight, because it changes your perspective. I love hyphenated words now, and responsibility to me is a response-ability. And what that means to me is I have the ability to choose my response. To me, I am literally responsible for everything that comes into my life. The good, the bad, the indifferent. And when I know this, if somebody ripped me off, that's not his problem, that's my problem. I, in my opinion, I attracted that. Now I can choose to say, screw that guy, I'm pissed, screw him, I'm gonna try to hurt him. Or I can say, what can I learn and what can I grow from? How can I grow from this? If you ask better questions, you're gonna get better answers. If you ask, why me, why me, why me, why me, this sucks, you're gonna get shitty answers. If you ask, what can I learn? What did I do to attract this into my life? And how can I grow from this? Those are great questions. You get great answers. And now you start to invoke, to me, one of the most powerful things in the world is self-accountability. I'm gonna use, uh, health and fitness because everybody can relate to it, okay? So if I want to lose weight, if I want to lose weight and I want to be healthy, what do I got to do? Right there, what'd you say? Work out and eat right. Can everybody agree with that? Yeah. All right. Work out, eat right. Now, if I work out and eat right, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna be healthy, correct? Yep. Not rocket science, it's not rocket science. Now, if I, don't, if I eat like crap, eat crap, not work out, what happens? Oops. <laughs> Fat and what? Unhealthy, right? Okay, now this is the first thing on, th on the, my point. Success is not a knowledge problem, it's an implementation problem. Everybody knows this, it was answered in two seconds. Everybody knows this. So why are we one of the most obese countries in the world? Why? If everybody knows what to do, why do so few people do it? If I feel, if I feel motivated and inspired, 
Is it a better chance I'm going to work out and eat right? If I feel great, feel motivated, feel fired, I'm going to, I'm going to go work out and eat right, right? If I'm unmotivated and uninspired, I'm probably going to eat like crap and I'm probably not going to work out. Fair deal? Does everybody agree? Yes. Can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah. All right. Okay, now, everybody who, who here likes to go to the gym? All right, so say you go run, you go run, you're sweating, you're lifting, you're doing whatever. And after that workout, and you had a really good workout, and you're sweating, and you're, you're just, you know, like, man, I got after it today. How do you feel? Okay, so if I think of the after workout, if I think of how that feels, Chances are I'm going to be motivated and inspired. Chances are I'm motivated and inspired. I'm going, to eat work, I'm going to work out and eat right. Fair enough? Yes. Okay. Now think about maybe three weeks in. People set their goals on every year. It happens. January, whatever, 1st, December 31st. They're like, I'm going to run five miles a day. I'm going to meditate for an hour. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And by January 15th, the statistics, that is done. Toast. Those goals are garbage. They're not even thinking. I hate going to the gym January 1st. I hate it. I feel like walking up to people at the gym on January 1st and being like, look, man, can you do us both a favor? Can you just leave? You're not going to be here in two weeks. That's how I feel. And I have to think of an attitude of gratitude for that because that pisses me off. So think about it like three weeks, a month in, right? A month in. And we're under our covers and it's 5 o'clock in the morning because everyone wants to start at 5 o'clock in the morning when they start to, to do these things and set these goals. And it's cold, and it's cold outside, it's warm underneath the covers, it's dark outside, you can't see anything, and that alarm clock hits 5 o'clock, and you hear, er, er, er. how do you feel? Great. <laughs> you've, been, you've been through my training. You can't answer. People tell me, the, what I, uh, speaking openly, people have told me all the time, fuck that, I'm out. Is that fair? Fair, yeah. very fair. <laughs> F it. Okay, so, if I think... Screw it. I'm not going to be motivated and inspired. I'm not, I'm not going to eat right and I'm not going to work out. I'm going to be fat and unhealthy. Not rocket science. If I, think, if I think of how awesome that is going to feel and how vital I'm going to feel and how great I'm going to feel and how I'm going to get in great health and fitness, I'm going to have boundless energy. If I think of that, heck yeah, I'm going to be motivated and inspired. If I'm motivated and inspired, I'm going to work out and eat right. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to be healthy. Is that fair? Does everybody agree with that? If you don't, tell me. Okay. This is where the champions live. This is where the bullshit lives, okay? This is where people achieve what they want and they have fulfillment in life. It's just intangible. You can't see it, so nobody focuses on it. If you focus here, everyone's like, you gotta get, if you have a little kid, you gotta get good grades, you gotta get grades, you gotta study more, you gotta study more. But what they're trying to do is build new actions and results based off of old thoughts and feelings because you can't see this. I can see this. I can see your action, I can see your results, so it's measurable. So everybody spends all of their time here, nobody spends on the foundational and the fundamental things of what will drive that action, okay? This is where I want you to think for a certain amount of time to increase this number. Now, I, when I learned this, I was like, why? I was a little kid that always asked why. Why is the sky blue? Why is the grass green? Why, mom? Why, 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 why? I'm gonna share four things with you, and we got a lot to cover, so I'm gonna go through it kinda quickly. But there's four things to me that resonated with me, so I'm going to share them with you. Number one is your reticular activating system. It's called an RAS. Um, so I'll share this story. I, I'm a warm-blooded dude, and when I start to talk, I, I sweat, right? So one of my friends took me to a store when I started, I basically changed my whole wardrobe when I started to talk, speak, do speaks. And we went to Lululemon. And I love Lululemon. It's stretchy, it lets me breathe for a warm-blooded dude. I'm kind of bulky, so it's like, I love, 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 love Lululemon. Throughout my, no shit, my entire wardrobe went out, everything is Lululemon now. No bullshit. Now we went there, you got, a lot of people in the room know me, I invited a ton of people to the parties, I, one of the guys ended up working for me, I was there for four hours, and I don't like shopping. My idea of shopping was like going to Kohl's with my mom. So I, I had this whole experience at Lululemon. So now Lululemon was relevant to me. I started seeing that little emblem everywhere. Everywhere I saw that emblem. At the gym, I saw it outside, I, everywhere I saw this emblem. Now, was that emblem always there? Or was it a coincidence now that I was just starting to see it? It was always there. Who can, who can tell me another phenomenon like that? Get a car. Get a car. 
Oh, exactly right. I was at the Hoffman Murphy, kick-ass Hoffman Murphy, love them. Uh, one of them said, like, when I got pregnant, I noticed a bunch of pregnant people. That is not a coincidence. There is a part in your brain called the reticular activating system that will notice things that is relevant to you. If I have something with emotion about green, if my favorite, if my dad's favorite color was green and I see green, my reticular activating system is going to pick it up. So if we want uh, a $200,000 income and we're programmed for 50 grand, a $200,000 income idea is going to come right over our heads. We're never going to notice it. If we want half a million bucks, Half a million bucks, right over our head if we're programmed for 100 grand. So that's why we want to think, what do we want? We can program ourselves. You think all the people that are millionaires and billionaires, you think they just had it handed to them? Maybe some of them, yes, but a lot of them didn't. And they programmed themselves and they conditioned themselves to, to, to be able to see what they wanted every single day. The second thing is your conscious mind to your subconscious mind, okay? Your conscious mind is an absolute feeding ground for your subconscious mind. I know the conscious mind operates at 40 bits per second, the subconscious mind, 40 million bits per second. Now, I don't know what that really means. What I do know is that is a hell of a lot more powerful than my conscious mind. My subconscious mind will run everything. It is determining how I feel. It is determining what I do, okay? So, and this is, finish this sentence for me. Money doesn't grow on trees. Your mother probably told you this. Be careful what you wish for, right? Those are two things that you probably haven't heard in a long time, but you pull them from your subconscious mind in a heartbeat because they are buried there. It is like a filing cabinet, and what you feed it is there, and it is there all the time. When I learned this, at first, it scared the crap out of me. And then I was like, I'm going to learn how to use it. I'm going to learn how to condition it. I am going to program it for life of fulfillment. Dose. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins versus adrenaline and cortisol. Okay? Awesome chemicals, terrible chemicals. Awesome chemicals, terrible chemicals. Endorphins, who, who knows about endorphins and when they're released? What do you got? After you exercise. After you exercise. So I asked everybody earlier, when you, after your workout, how do you feel? Awesome, why? Because you're releasing awesome chemicals in your brain. Dopamine is all over cocaine. It's just cocaine is laced with a whole bunch of bad crap. A lot of people in the room know this. <laughs> but that is a huge, huge part of cocaine, it's dopamine. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful chemicals, and we can release them anytime we want. Anytime we want, we can release these awesome chemicals. So why don't we do it all the time? Because we're not conditioned and programmed to do in a life of fulfillment. Adrenaline, cortisol. Who here has been driving, maybe texting, they look up, whoosh, brake lights right in your face, slam on the brakes, <gasps> that feeling that you go, it goes whoosh, right down the middle of your spine. You guys feel that? You know that? That's cortisol. Bad chemical, bad chemical, but it serves a purpose. Who here has heard of like freak strength? Something happens and some kid gets freak strength, you've heard of that? That's cortisol, so it serves a purpose, but you can't do it to yourself all the time. It's like drinking 5,000 Red Bulls in an hour. That will break your body down from the inside out. So it serves a purpose, but it's bad. This is what's released when we're stressed. We know how visceral stress is. When everything's going bad, work's bad, relationships bad, home life is bad, kids bad, all this stuff bad, it's like holy shit, this this absolute shitstorm's coming at me, and it feels terrible. You're releasing cortisol all over the place, and you're breaking yourself down from the inside out. Adrenaline, same thing. Great chemicals, bad chemicals, we have complete control of what we release whenever we want. When your brain has a thought, it goes straight to this thing called the hypothalamus. The good news and the bad news, the thought is always consistent with the feeling. If I have a grateful thought, I release this. If I have a stressful thought, I release this. It's that simple. It is that simple and it's happening to you every single day, whether you know it or not, or whether you like it or not. So we might as well start programming ourselves for the good stuff. And you can do that tonight. When you do this, you start to understand how powerful you freaking are. And that, going back to responsibility, is one of the best feelings, me personally, that I've ever, ever, ever had. I know how strong and powerful I am and I implement it every single day, okay? One thing I, I try to finish this sentence for me. Knowledge is who said it? Yes. It is not power. If knowledge was power, everybody would be in shape. It's not power. It's potential power. Give her a hand. Okay. Why do you want 300000 So I can fund my family life. What would that mean? What would they do? It means um, my two kids. Save what are their names? How do you spell them? D-I-A-N-N-A-S-O-C-H-I-A. 
Got it. Two kids, Gianna and Sophia. What's most important to them? To them. Uh, being happy, being able to do their fun things. You make 300000 what can you do for these two? I can give them a great life. What does that mean? What does that tell they me? Dance, Explain it. They dance, they sports, they play. What sports they like? Basketball, softball, dancing. Okay. What else? Would you take a vacation? Yeah. Where? What would you do in Europe? Where would you go? Italy and France. Why? My family in France, and I've never been to Italy with my husband. Would you take the kids? Yeah. What's your husband's name? Jeremiah. I'm going to put Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would, would you, you would bring the kids to Italy or what? <laughs> Tell him, terrible speller. Terrible. Terrible speller. Uh, would you bring the kids to Italy? No, I bring them to France and I live in Lafayette and live in France and go to Italy with my husband. Nice. What would you guys, what would you do in Italy? What would you two do in Italy? Uh, Canals? Lots. <laughs> Drink wine, eat food, uh, go see the sights. Yeah. Would it fair to say it'd be romantic? Absolutely. All right, I'm going to cut this short because I'm being conscious of time. But, okay. So Laura wants $300,000. When you're sitting in your goals today, I want you to choose the very specific words that are gonna resonate, vibrate high with you. Abundance, love, family. Those are high vibrating words. She doesn't want, what's your name again? Laura. Laura doesn't want $300,000. Money is green numbers, it's green paper with numbers written on it. It doesn't matter, okay? This is achievement, this is fulfillment. Attack fulfillment. She doesn't want the $300,000. She wants to go to Hawaii and Europe, be able to fund her family with her two kids, Giovanni and Sophia. They'll make them happy, give their kids a great life. They'll be dancing, they'll playing sports, they're playing hoops, they'll play softball. They're gonna go to Italy and France. They're gonna drop the kids off with family in France. They're gonna go to Jeremiah and Italy alone. They're gonna have an unbelievable romantic time eating food, awesome food, drinking wine. That's what she wants. She doesn't want $300,000. She wants what the money can afford her to do because that's gonna make her feel freaking awesome. So what I ask of you is develop, this is called your magnificent, it took me a long time to spell that word out in front of everybody, obsession. This is what I want you to develop today. Your magnificent obsession. It is not a monetary goal. Your money, the mean, this is achievement. This is fulfillment. This is what will drive you. This is what will get you to that 10. This will make you to make 600 calls. This will get you to go the extra mile. This will get you to stay at the office late and love it. It's not about staying at the office late. It's about staying in the office and late with a purpose because you love it. And then your management team will love you for it. And then you will love your management team for it. And that creates synergy. I'm going to ask for five minutes. There's 1,440 minutes in a day. 1,440 minutes. That is one third of 1%, not even 1%. That is one third of 1% that I'm gonna ask you to write down your magnificent obsession, review it every day, program yourself, have the thought, have the feeling, using cognitive dissonance, releasing the awesome chemicals in your brain, probably your, your conscious, your subconscious mind, your reticular activating stuff uh, system will start picking all of this up and then it's easy to take the action, okay? Five minutes, five minutes, that's all I'm asking. And people say, well, shit, you know, I gotta do this and I, gotta, I can't get up that early. Or, oh, I, I gotta make this call, this guy's pissed off. Well, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. Time out, time out, time out, time out. What about you? What about what you want? Fill your cup up first, feed the world with what overflows. What about your kids? What about your spouse? A great man once said, <laughs> I love this quote, but be the change you want to see in the world. Start with this. Start with this. What about you? What about the things that you want? What do they do when they tell you to get on a plane? The little, what happens if that, if that little mask drops? What do they tell you to do? right? But we're so programmed to do the opposite with everything that will break us down biochemically. 
because people aren't aware of these things, because they're not tangible, because we can't see them. But they will change your life, they change mine, and it's just what my mentors taught me. 2009 is, is about when I, I read uh, that article for the first time, and I was a sales rep at Sears Home Improvements. And we were doing really well back then. And this is, I think 2008, 2009, it's kind of when the, the world was falling apart, right? Not very many high vibrating times, but I was uh, as a sales rep, kind of starting my career in sales, and was doing pretty good. Uh, monthly, I was, I was earning around seven, $8,000 monthly bonus, just bonus, not commissions, just in the bonus structure. And they cut it, they absolutely cut it. An $8,000 bonus went to about 900, 1,000 bucks. But they took the upside, and they made another bonus that was $49,625. But they made the, the metric so astronomical. I was at my boss's wedding, and I was like, I was the mayor of negative town, man. I was bringing everybody with me, because I was, had a team of reps, and we were, out of 5,000 reps in the country, we were in the top probably 10. And there were three or four of us at this one wedding. And I was going off on my VP, and I was like, this is bullshit. You guys are gonna lose a ton of people. How can you do this? What is Sears thinking? I was the mayor of Negative Town. I went off on my VP and he said, Ricky, so what you're telling me is it can't be done. And it was like a gut shot to me. I love the guy to the day. He challenged me in a way that nobody ever could. And it was like a gut shot. And I was like, it can be done. But I just went right back to Negative Town. He's like, no, 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 wait. So what you're telling me is it can't be done. I went home that night, wrote out my goals for the very, very, very first time. The very, very first time, and this is the exact replica of what I wrote down, I had my what, my how, my where, my when, and the why. My why was a $49,625 bonus. I wanted to remodel my house, get my car, uh, my parents, my sister, time off, travel, Sweden, London, Iceland, Australia. QOL, it's a phrase I use a lot, quality of life, quality of life, quality of life. This is what I focus on and my quality of life. My magnificent obsession is about quality of life. <clears throat> um, Eat right, drink right, H2O. So in my world, I live in Marina Del Rey. I had to travel where it was hot, it was air conditioning, so I wanted to go where it was hot. We would I'd go out to Rancho Cucamonga. My office was in Santa Fe Springs. So I would start at my house, go out to Rancho Cucamonga, Ontario. I'd go back to the office, I'd sleep at the office, get dressed the next day. People thought I was nuts. I'd shower at the gym, I think. Uh, sleep at office, shower at gym. I, I had it all done. I was like, look, if this can be done, I'm not going to shortcut it. And then I put down every, I tracked every single sale that I had, and I had this arc business was kind of like a, a combo sale. So if we got and sell, call it heating and air, if I sold windows, we needed 20 of those. So long, long, long story short, it's probably too late for that. I was the first person out of 5,000 reps to hit it, and I hit it a month after that guy challenged me, and it was the first time I had ever written out my goals, ever. And I made over $87,000 in two weeks. And I was like, wow. So hold on, time out, time out, time out, time out. What you're telling me is if I write it down, I have them, I write them down, and I use them, and I focus, I look at this every single day. Every single day, this drove me. Every single day. Still, I have this kind of aversion when I look at it, man, because it, 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 it pumps me up. And every single day I looked at it. So I had them, I wrote them, and I used them. And I earned over $87,000 in two weeks. And what was ironic about that was the money was awesome, I got my car, bought like, I don't know, like $9,000 car, remodeled two bathrooms, the floors, the kitchens, everything. And it was great. I loved it, don't get me wrong, but it was this. It wasn't fulfilling, and I was like, why is this, why is it an empty feeling? Like, I just kicked ass. I, everyone in the company has asked me to go and share with what I did. The feeling was phenomenal. Why doesn't this feel awesome? And I asked myself that question, and I heard, I think this is from Tony Robbins, I heard a long time ago, it's not what you get, it's who you become and what you're able to contribute. What you become and, and what you're able to contribute. What you become and what you're able to contribute. And another mentor, Dave Meltzer, I wanna to point to the camera, don't attach your happiness to the outcome, enjoy the pursuit. And when I learned those two things, it wasn't about the money, it was what I became to train other people to help facilitate, and also what I was able to contribute. So my dad loves vacuuming. My dad will vacuum the entire house without being asked eight days a week. No kidding. And he loves Dyson vacuums. And when I learned fulfillment, I got my dad a Dyson vacuum. <laughs> this thing was like 1,800 bucks. 50, I don't know what it was. To me, it was a colossal waste of money. To give my dad that vacuum that he loved, 
Now I understood the meaning of this. Now I understood the meaning of this. That meant the world to me to help facilitate joy of the, of, of the awesomeness of my family and to see my dad and my mom send me that picture. And now he went from vacuuming the house from eight days a week to like 15 days a week. So my mom was happy too. This was fulfillment to me. My sister likes really weird stuff. This table was like a $475 table. I don't know why, and it was an absolute garbage table to me. But she wanted it. And now I had the resources and I had the time to be able to go visit home and go buy her this table to me, which was the absolute ridiculous waste of money I've ever seen. But it made her happy. So that meant it made me happy. And then when I thought about these things, I felt a certain way. Then it gave me great action, and I didn't have to worry about the result. This formality. This is where you want to spend your time. Now, I had awesome chemicals being released in my brain. I used cognitive dissonance to my advantage, and I felt awesome because of my sister. My mom is deathly scared of heights. We went to Paris, and she didn't go up the escalator on the Eiffel Tower. She walked, deathly, deathly, deathly afraid of heights. This is her. She's crying. She wears her sunglasses. She was embarrassed. She put her sunglasses on. She was like, don't take a picture. I was like, mom, you know me. I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> My mom's trying to cuddle. Of course, I'm documenting. I'm like two rows up taking a picture. My dad's saying, do you want to go down? Do you want to go down? She's like, no, I can make it with my family. I can make it with my family. I hear this. I hear this. I feel awesome because of what I think. My mom is trying to do something for her family. It makes me feel a certain way. I take a different action. I go down. I go down the flight of stairs. And I see my mom. She's bawling. People are walking by us and like, holy crap, these people are crazy on the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? So I start talking to her. And of course, I document the picture. But because I had the time and the resources to go to my mom, to go to Europe on a three-week trip, to have, I also, she was a little out of shape. And we got her a personal trainer beforehand, so she got up the nerve to go and get her out of her afraid of heights. She was in shape to be able to get to the top. And this is one of the most fulfilling pictures I've ever had at the top of the Eiffel Tower with my mom. Because that, now I understand again, yeah, my mom's. That's good video there. Talk about my mom's, get a round of applause. That's good stuff. Um, now, this meant fulfillment to me. So when you talk about or think about or share your magnificent obsession, get down to the granule level. That's why if your goal was an eight or a seven or below, find a new goal. Because now this will drive me to work the 15-hour days if I need to. One of the most significant times in my life was when I watched The Secret. It was January 15, 2007, I believe. With The Secret, I love The Secret, but what it forgot and left out was all the chemical and electrical reasons. They make it seem if you think something, you don't really have to work at it, but you have to work your ass off at it, and this is what facilitates that work ethic. <laughs> <laughs>